Hi y'all, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Amira, and today guys, we are going to be talking about my best makeup of 2023. I'm a little late on this. I, you know, I was, I had done my rankings of foundations and my eyeshadow palettes, and I got busy with life. Life started lifing, and I was like, looking at my watch going, I think it's a little late for a best of 2023, but I asked you guys on my community tab and you're very enthusiastic about it. So here we go. Best makeup of 2023. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So I pulled everything here and I actually, it's not that much. I think it's a decent amount, but when I do these type of lists, I get very picky and I, I, I really only pick a few things from my like my eyeshadow palette ranking and my foundation ranking and I'm very sort of choosy about what I include in this list because this is the best of and I don't want to be like, well, all of the things in my top, you know, everything is the best. No, I wanted this to be pretty curated and I think I did a good job with that. I am missing one item that is actually in my purse because I still use it all the time but we'll get to that and I'll grab it when I get to that category so first up let's talk about base products so if you've been watching my channel for a while you know that in the summer I did a concealer ranking and what I was doing I had a little project that I had going since like towards the beginning of the year where I was trying a ton of concealers and I then did, sat down and did a ranking and a review of each and every concealer. And if I can remember, I will put a card or a link down below to that video. And the, the concealer that came out on top and that I continue to reach for consistently was the Givenchy Prism Libre Palette um, Concealer. Why am I saying palette? Concealer. Um, and this concealer... <laughs> Coast, the Kosas Revealer Concealer was my bay, was my number one, was my one and only for so long. I went through two tubes of that concealer, no problem, which is insane because I very rarely pan complexion products because I have so many. Um, but I panned that one twice. And I decided, I was like, okay, I'm gonna put a moratorium on repurchasing it. I wanna try some other things. And so that's why I was trying so many concealers because I really ultimately wanted to know if there was any concealer that could hold a candle to or even surpass my love for the Kosas Revealer Concealer. And then that's where this little baby came into play. And I will say, I reached for the Kosas recently, not that recently, but in recent time, and I enjoyed it. But I wasn't like, oh my God, I forgot how much I love this. Like I remember, I put it on, I was like, this is a really good concealer. But I wasn't like blown away by it anymore. Like usually what I would put on, I'd be like, oh, I love you so much. And I was just like, this is a really good concealer. And I, I know that it's a really good concealer. Whereas with this one, when I put it on the other day and I just did my full face with this, I just, I just used this and I put it strategically and blended it out. And I was like, because I hadn't been using this. I had put a moratorium on using this one because I had purchased so many concealers and I really wanted to get some use out of them. And this one, I was just like, you're still the one I run to. Beautiful concealer. And this is my new fave. I would say the Kosas is still in the top. It's in the top five of my all-time favorite concealers, but this one has stolen its place in my heart. The other concealer that really kind of blew me away af uh, this year that came out after I had already done that video um, was the House Labs Triclone Concealer. First of all, the House Labs Foundation is probably my favorite foundation at the moment in my collection. I absolutely love it. I know it's a, it's, it's a, you can be on the struggle bus trying to find your shade match, but once you do, it's a beautiful foundation. and. Um, the concealer is a different consistency and what i find is that i feel like house labs did the same thing that kind of the same thing that pat mcgrath did with her foundation and her concealer which her concealer used to be one of my all-time faves when my styles my makeup tastes were a little bit different but i did adore that concealer um in that the foundation is a little bit lighter in coverage a little bit thinner and the concealer is the one that's like kind of thick, a bit more pigmented. Um, when I say thick, I don't mean, f she's not thick. 
Like, she's not hard to blend. I'm wearing her today. She is a beautiful concealer. Um, but it's more of a traditional texture, but the way that it applies to the skin is very skin light with just a hint more coverage. And I really enjoy this. This is something that I would suggest if you are someone who's looking for like something that will strategically kind of cover certain things, but also still look skin like and natural. This is a really good option. Also in that vein, and I kind of have this out more as a foundation than as a concealer because that's kind of how I've been using it recently. But I, when I originally reviewed um, the Urban Decay Quickie All Over Concealer, Urban Decay Stay Naked Quickie Concealer, I kind of gave it like middling review because it was a concealer that wasn't really my vibe in its finish. It's a bit more matte. Um, it's a bit more pigmented. Um, and I was just sort of like, it's not really my jam, you know? Um, but then I found myself reaching for this more and more. But what the way that I would use it is I would use it like a foundation. And that's how I've been using this. And it is considered an all over concealer. Like it's something that you can use in lieu of foundation. So it does actually function in that way. But what I liked about this is that because it has a bit more coverage, it functions. So, I, I don't like the way it applies just as a concealer on its own. But when you use it as a foundation, and I, it's first of all, it's one product, and th that is amazing. You know, when I'm getting up at like 5:30 in the morning to get ready for work, I like the idea that I can reach for this one complexion product, and it can do everything. So, for me, I apply it lightly under the eyes. I strategically apply here, a little bit here, and I blend it out. And it gives because it's so pigmented. It blends out and covers so nicely that you don't need to use a lot of product. And so by not using by using less product, it gives a more skin-like finish, but with more coverage. Do you see what I mean? And that's it's it's a really beautiful, like happy happy medium of getting the coverage that you want with not with not a lot of product. And so that's why how I've been using this. And I've actually been reaching for this a ton. It's in my um, winter makeup capsule. And this is sort of the, the product that I reach for when, again, when I'm getting up early, I don't have time to do like a full a whole thing. And I want to make sure that I want my skin to, you know, have coverage and be evened out, but still look like, you know, my skin. And because I can use less of this to do that, it works quite well. Um, and also I feel like this, if you prep your skin and make it just a bit more moisturized, not dewy necessarily, unless you go for that, it actually won't be, it, it actually doesn't feel quite as matte as, as it normally or typically would. Um, and cream products apply beautifully over this. Um, I use this, I don't set because it's matte and because it's kind of got that sort of like more matte finish. I don't, I don't have to set my face. So I, that in and of itself lends to a more skin like finish because you're not like setting up taking something that's full coverage and then putting powder on it i don't have like three or four complexion you know what i mean so i can apply my cream bronze or i can apply my my liquid blush and my skin looks like skin and i have gotten compliments on my skin when i'm wearing this and just this by itself with you know my makeup on top of it it is a a lovely surprise this is, this has sort of been like a dark horse in my makeup collection in 2023 or was since we're in 2024 now but yes this and still is because I'm still using it so beautiful product and for a traditional foundation that this was ranked number one in my foundation ranking of my foundations that I tried in 2023 and that is the Smashbox Always On um this is not in my winter makeup capsule so I haven't been using this one as much but it is still like top tier as far as foundations that I tried in 2023. If you want to hear me wax poetically about this foundation, I'm going to again leave a card up for my foundation ranking. But this was this was one that gave me what everyone else was getting from that Shiseido foundation that came out some years ago that never worked for me. This gave me what that was giving everyone else. Lovely. I have three bronzers here in three completely different formulations and I almost forgot two of them and then my brain was like oh wait wait and that's the thing about when you do these best lists it's like you have to really like think about the, all the products that you've used over the year and when you are a youtuber you use a lot of products but I'm very happy with my little trio of, of bronzers here that I want to show you guys so first up is a bronzer that I feel like a lot of people didn't like this release they didn't like this formulation, but I also think the reason for that is a lot of them chose the, the matte version of this product. 
I went with the one that has, well, I bought two and I reviewed them on my channel. And first off, just to give you heads up what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Pat McGrath Skin Finish Divine Bronzers and I have Desert Glow. I also bought it in another shade. I can't remember the name of it, but it was part of the little, tr the little duo that she was selling where you got two bronzer shades, one shimmer, one matte. And the matte one I tried and I didn't dislike, but I wasn't in love with. Um, and this one I used so much, specifically in the summer. And this is what it looks like. This is, like I said, this is Desert Glow. And this just has a soft sheen to it. It's got a soft, and I don't even know if the camera is picking up, but maybe a little bit, a soft sheen to it. And what a lot of people had issues with with these bronzers is that they felt that they were too orange. Now, I will say when I opened mine up, I was like, these Pat says, these are very orange. These are very orange. But for me, this doesn't read as orange on my skin once I blend it out. It just doesn't. It's not orange on me. It's it's a, a really pretty, like, glowy, neutral tone once I've actually blended it out. So I think the tones scare people. The matte formulation is good. It's just not, like... A, it's not like amazing. I feel like the, the the matte ones are just like a standard matte powder bronzer. But if you get Desert Glow, and I think there's another one that's got shimmer or glow to it. If you get one of those, you're going to be very impressed. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful bronzer. And as you, I, I mean, I, as you can see, I used quite a bit of it. It's quite loved. And yeah, beautiful beautiful powder bronzer and not a lot of powder bronzers have come into my life because I am almost exclusively now a cream bronzer gal so for me to like a powder bronzer at this juncture in my you know my makeup career um is saying something and next up is another bronzer that I was using um quite a bit in the summer and I was actually using these like kind of like one day I would use this one, one day I would use this one, or I would put them together and I would use this one first and then I would set it with this one. And that is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Glow Liquid Bronzer. <sighs> Can you see how much of this I've used? You can, it's going to take me a while to finish this, but I've used a ton considering. This is a beautiful product. If you want a really beautiful, natural, like the sun has kissed your skin and look how glowy and healthy you look. You look amazing. You look like you went on vacation in the south of France and were on a yacht and your skin just kind of got, you were wearing sunscreen, but you got a little kissed by the sun. This is what this gives. It is so beautiful. I bought this on a whim in the sense I was like let me see if I even like that. I was very intrigued by the, the promo photos because the promo photos were giving that sort of sun kiss glow look and I was like okay I'm gonna try it this is stunning I don't feel like this is something I want to use in the winter but this is something that I loved using in the summer I don't wear a lot of base product in the summer I usually just wear a strategically placed concealer and then putting this on it just made my skin look it looked so healthy and glowy and just beautiful and skin-like. It doesn't feel like makeup on your skin. It doesn't look like makeup on your skin. I would take this, I would apply it with my fingers. Applying with a sponge really works. I don't know if I would apply this with a brush. This is not a brush product, but applying it with a sponge, just like putting it on your, just a couple drops on your hand and then dipping and then, so beautiful, so beautiful. Love this. And then finally is a bronzer that I recently purchased. I purchased this in November, but it has shot straight up the list of bronzers that I love because it is a tone that I had never tried before that I was very intrigued by and that I think is a perfect tone for like winter bronzer. And that is the Phyto Surgeons Spectral Sunlight Cream Bronzer in the shade Rosy Blaze. That's right, rosy. So this is a rosy tone. Can you see how well, how well loved this is? This is a rosy toned bronzer. It does not look brown, like brown or orange on the skin. It is a, it just gives this sort of like, oh, like you've been in the, been out in the cold a little bit. Out in the cold on a sunny, snowy day. So you get that little bit of color, but it's not the same color you would get if you were somewhere warm or the sun was touching your face. You know what I mean? It gives that sort of cool, slight coolness that the skin would take on 
in winter weather so this for me this has become like my go-to winter bronzer i don't know if i would wear it a lot in the summer they do have a like a warmer version so i'm tempted to i'm, I'm curious to try that one as well but this for me has been what i've been switching between this one and another bronzer um, I'm wearing the other one today because I was going for a more traditional vibe of bronzer, but this has been such a go-to for me. Using this with the quickie, uh, the Stay Naked Quickie All Over Concealer, this is the bronzer that I usually use with that. Stunning. Next up, let's talk blush. And let's talk about a blush that came out and sold out and was out of stock for what felt like months. And take a sip of my very cold apple cider it makes me sad but it's delicious this one came in like a wrecking ball for me it really did um I wanted to try it I kept seeing people review it and people wearing it and I'd be like wow it's so beautiful but it's out of stock and then finally my girl Char Char finally brought it back and that is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand in the shape Pillow Talk I'm wearing it today this blush is what I refer to as a unicorn product. When I use the term unicorn, I am speaking of a product that I have yet to see look bad on anyone. It's one of those products that looks good on mo like majority of skin tones. Even though it's like a neutral, slightly light pink, it's a pigmented blush but not too pigmented not like rare beauty pigmented where it's like out of control pigment sometimes a lot of the time um but it just has this tone to it and this is what i say about charlotte tilbury is i don't feel like her products are always that exciting but where she gets it right is formulation and for me the tone of this this is a tone that i have not found in other blushes i have looked for it but i have not been able to find it in a tone that works for me that didn't pull too cool you know that didn't just look pink 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 once I blended it out this is one that has stayed that beautiful neutral almost mauvey toned pink it is so beautiful it blends like a dream the pigment is beautiful it looks like skin on your skin um, it lasts I was just blown away by this and this was just hand like this was a this was the first one when I was like okay what am I picking for best the best category in blush this is the first blush I thought of like absolutely no-brainer it's going on the list the next blush that also I wanted to include on the list is another blush that like I feel like these came out and I resisted and resisted and they were sold out and then they came back in stock and then me being the slow poke that I am I finally decided to buy one and that are that is the Giorgio Armani luminous silk glow blush um, and I have the shade 11, which I think is the nude rose shade. It's this shade here. How pretty is that? What I like about shades like this and blushes like this when they're done well is it can look quite light and like maybe not pigmented enough in the pan, but then you apply it to the skin and it gives this beautiful natural flush. And what's great about this one, it is, is it is luminous. So it has a glow to it. This is a glowy blush. And it reminds me a bit, a bit of the Chantecai emotions blushes um the ones that come in the like or the i say emotion because i think the one i have is emotion it's the one the little ones that come to have with the little animals embossed on them i have the bee one and that one is more like a peachy toned pink but it has a luminosity to it but when you open it up it looks so pale in the pan you're like this is not going to work for anyone my shade or deeper but it does and it just gives this beautiful glowy flush to, this, to the cheeks. That's what this does, except it's just a bit more neutral, which I actually prefer. And I just think it's so lovely. Again, I've been using so many cream and liquid blushes. So for me to have a, a, a powder blush on this list says something about that blush. It really does. It's so beautiful. And finally, I have another phytosurgeons product that I tried phytosurgeons for the first time in November but I've been using these products pretty much every day since I got them and one of the shades that I of the skin spark blushes that I purchased is one of the limited edition shades is the shade Kendall and this one has been my go-to look at that tone look at that tone it's stunning and this is just one of those products guys that like it's so easy to use. I apply with my fingers. It's very pigmented. It's not overly dewy. What I, what I was shocked about with these is that I was expecting it to be very like dewy and like, you know, that kind of like 
vibe that can be kind of a, kind of hard to work with or hard to get to last on the skin. It's emollient, but it's not overly dewy and slippy. It blends into the skin so nicely and it just looks like skin. It's not, you know, it's not sliding all over the place, you know, like some liquid blushes and cream blushes can do. It's It stays where you apply it. You can apply it quite strategically and you can manipulate it very easily and it just looks like your skin but the tone of this Kindle shade is you know I have other shades from them that I've been wearing and that I like but this one is the one that stuck out because it's the one I've been reaching for and it just gives that toasted like you can use this in lieu of bronzer like I usually use this with the rosy blaze so I get that rosiness and then I get this like toasted vibe and it just looks like fresh skin in the winter It's such a beautiful finish and a beautiful combination absolutely love it so this formulation but this shade specifically is definitely one of my best of last year and then finally let's talk powder i don't use a lot of powder i don't even own a lot of powder anymore guys i used to own so many powders and now i think i own maybe three and one of them is like almost done so i'm probably going to toss it and that's a pressed powder um but this Givenchy prism libre um matte finish and enhanced radiance loose powder um, yeah, this, I have the shade, I think it's Pompeline, Mimous Pompeline, I think is the name of it. This is what I use to strategically powder. I don't apply this all over my face. I strategically powder here. And what it does a great job of doing is that it doesn't flatten the skin. It doesn't like mattify it to the part point that it's just like flat, but it just pulls some shine away. But it also, because it has the four quadrants that have, you know, like the banana powder, the finish powder, and then like the, the setting powder, and then like a luminous powder, it still blur, it blurs the skin a bit while also still keeping a bit of glow. It's just a beautiful, beautiful powder. And I have the mini size. I still have a ton of product, as you can see, because I don't use that much on a daily basis. So I say if you're interested in this and the price point is kind of like making you cough a little bit, just get the mini if you and see how you like it and if you go through a lot of powder and you like it then maybe it is worth investing in the larger size but for me the mini has been perfect now let's talk eyes so I was like is there a mascara that has really wowed me and I was like well there's one and so I've got one mascara in that category and that is the YSL Lash Clash mascara um, and I have it in the brown shade. And let me just say, this is one of the best like brown mascaras on the market right now because a lot of these brown mascaras aren't brown at all. They're just like brown black. They're like slightly lighter blacks and you don't see the brown anywhere. This one gives you brown. You want brown, it gives you brown. I'll open it up and I'll show you guys what I mean by it. It's just, it's a brown. It's brown. <laughs> it's not brown black. It's not a black and brown, you know, and also it's just a really good mascara. Like it volumizes it, you know, I, for, I have long lashes, but I need to like fill them out. They're a little sparse. So this gives me good volume. It does lengthen. It does. They don't get chunky and spidery looking. Um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I want to try it in the, the traditional black as well. I'm not one to buy full size mascaras most of the time because I don't, I'm a stickler about throwing my mascaras away at the three month mark. Um, so for me, because I have multiple mascaras and I try not to have too many open, but I usually almost always have like at least two open. I try not to buy full size because I kind of feel like it's a waste of money. Um, this doesn't come in a mini as far as I know. I, they might have a mini out now. I know a couple of brands came out with mini mascaras at the beginning of this year, end of last year. So there might be a mini now. If there is, I'm going to just pick up the mini of the black. But yes, this is a beautiful, beautiful mascara. It's expensive. It's YSL. This is a luxury mascara, so sticker shock. You will have it if you, you, you prepare yourself, gird your loins. But if you're looking for like a actual brown, and honestly, with a lot of the drugstore mascaras, I tried looking for a brown that was gonna give me brown, and I just wasn't getting it. I was getting a lot of black and brown. So I, this, which is one of the reasons why I felt I needed to sort of step outside of the drugstore range and see what I could find at the higher price point, and I got what I was looking for. Next up are two um, shades from the um, About Face Beauty, um, what do they call these? Fluid Eye Paints. These are not new, but they're new to me um, because I, when I first tried the About Face Beauty 
fluid eye paints I got them in really bright colors and I wasn't that impressed by them and I'm still not super impressed by the super bright colors I feel like if you're looking for something that's going to give you vibrancy that you don't have to manipulate too much I would suggest the Danessa Myricks um, fluid paints um, but I the, the the brighter tones of the about face beauty ones I'm not that impressed by but the neutral tones and the glitter ones I am obsessed with so I have the shade here I believe this is Capulets this is very neutral on me it's almost my skin tone but it's such a beautiful base and it blends beautifully on the eye and I'm gonna swatch it here so you guys can see it you see how light that is it's it's like my skin but when I'm going for a supernatural look but I want something I want like a base tone this is what I use and I just blend it out and then I'll apply like a shimmer over top and these just blend so nicely they blend so nicely and but for me the star of the show that line are the fractal the fractal eye paints the glitter eye paints they are stunning this is the shade apollo empire and this is the newest one in my collection i got this in i want to say december but i have had the fracture one in my collection for a while and it takes a lot to get through because it's a lot of product but i absolutely love it and i have it in the old packaging which isn't that great the new packaging looks like these um so this is apollo empire and they're just they're so nice y'all they're so nice and they last and if you're going for that that super sparkly eye but you don't want a lot of effort for me you know in my day-to-day -day life as much as I love makeup I don't have the time most of most of the time to do like full looks but I still want to wear pretty eye makeup taking something like this and then taking one of the fractal eye paints and tapping that all over my lid and then putting on some mascara maybe I'll do a smoky line if I want to be more dramatic maybe not but it gives me a look that's just like pretty and that I feel confident in and good in that I can wear for the rest of the day but these the natural the neutral tone formulas of this and the fractal eye paints are have been a, a go-to for me for or were a go-to for me for 2023 and I don't see that really changing in 2024 and finally guys eyeshadows so I did my eyeshadow palette ranking that video is up if you want to see how I feel about all the eyeshadow palettes that I tried in 2023 it's there but I wanted to talk I wanted to include at least two of my faves that were on my ranking for 2023 and so I decided to pick the two that were at the top the so the first one is the adept cosmetics Sumerian sunset palette I rank this as number one palette that I tried in 2023 and I stand by that <sighs> this palette is so stunning it's so stunning it's so stunning I don't even know what else to say these multi-chromes kind of made me fall back in love with multi-chromes because I had serious multi-chrome fatigue but these just I don't know what it is about them they just really stole my heart and oh I just this palette is is beautiful I will say I did have one criticism for it and I felt like the mattes were I think we needed a little bit more um depth in the mattes I didn't I wasn't like wow by the mattes in the form in the palette they're not bad by any means but I mean like and I'll show it again I don't want to go into de too depth with it because I do have a whole like spiel about this palette but these shades I feel like I wish they had swapped out one of these lighter tones for a deep deep tone because this actually doesn't go that deep on the eye and so I often find myself having to reach outside of the palette to deepen an outer corner that's my like main complaint but outside of that this is a perfect palette it's a perfect palette another perfect palette Natasha Denona Yuka palette this palette this is like me in a color story it's so pretty uh, it's so pretty and I have I, I have this is a palette that I have a lot of fun you know when you have makeup that makes you that you just have fun using it's the same with the Sumerian sunset and that's why these one of the another reason why these rank so high in my ranking is because I have fun when I pull these palettes out to use like they're a joy to use I'm excited to use them I'm ha always happy with my eye look I always feel good when I'm wearing them um, the formulas always work for me so this palette here has such beautiful like textures and these are like newer textures that Natasha hadn't had in her palettes before um, specifically Elysian and Makia um, and yeah even Komo Komorebi these here have these like flakiness to them so they're metallics they're not glitter but they almost have that flakiness that some multi-chromes have without being multi-chrome 
so you get that like really that beautiful textured shine but you don't get necessarily if you're not into the whole shifty multi-chrome thing which I admit some a lot of times I'm not like I like multi-chromes but a lot of the times I'm just looking for a really well done metallic that gives me like some oomph and pizzazz and texture and you know all of that stuff but I'm not necessarily looking for like color shift you know what I mean that's what this palette gives and yeah I think this is one of the best color stories she's done in a really long time in a really long time and I, it was a reminder for me and I think for the other girlies out there um for the guys that Natasha can do a color story you know I feel like she's gotten a little um she's gotten a little off track sometimes with her color stories I feel like they're a little too basic but she can do a color story like she can do a color story and she can do really good formulations and that hasn't changed so yeah this palette to me is like definitely one of the best palettes that I tried in 2023 and one of my favorite palettes that I tried in 2023 all right guys and finally for lip products I only have one because I I've tried some new formulations it was towards the end of 2023 though so I don't want to necessarily include them because I don't feel like I've used them enough to call them favorites although this one this hourglass lipstick is kind of still in my heart I've been wearing it nonstop. But when I'm not wearing this, I'm wearing this other product that is has been repurchased three times. Three times. And that is the About Face Beauty Cherry Pick Lip Color Butter. I hate the name of these product, this product, but I love the formulation. And the color that I have been repurchasing is Kiwi Fizz. Let me swatch it a little bit on my hand if I can. It's very buttery and melty, so this is the shade. <sighs> I love this product, and I wasn't going to repurchase it. I had told myself I wasn't going to repurchase it because I'm like, you know, you've gone through two of them. Um, my one gripe with this product is because it is very, very melty, but also you don't get a lot of product. Like, the product is from here to here. So once this is, is, I wouldn't even say it's not even all the way down. I would say once it's like, like to here. So once you get to that point, there's no product to be had. Um, so for me, when I think of it that way, it's not that great of a purchase price point wise. I think these are like 18 each. I go through, I went through two of these with no problem. And this is the third one. And I'm probably going to be, I'll be, I could see myself being done with this one by like March. Will I repurchase? Probably. But I also have other formulations that are similar, that are more expensive, but last longer, like the Gucci ones, the Glow and Care lip shines. They remind me of that in the, in the way that they sit on the lips. The formulations are different. This one is much, it's a bit thicker of a formula, but that like emollient, really emollient, moisturizing, hydrating feeling that you get on your lips with that nice, slightly more pigmented shine very similar in that sense but the gucci one lasted me over a year you know what i mean and this one's lasting me like a couple some months so <laughs> price point wise purchasing these at 18 bucks a pop and having to constantly replace it versus buying the gucci at 47 and having it for a year and a half you kind of have to like do the math you know so will i repurchase this probably but i might not I might just get the Gucci instead because I still the Gucci is like one of my faves but I, I this is still like the best lip product that I've tried this in 2023 it was it has been a staple the fact that I didn't go I'm not going to repurchase it I'm just going to try something else which is what a lot of us makeup you know lovers and youtubers especially do is like we one of the things we want to try lots of formulas we enjoy trying you know different formulations and different products from different brands and it's something that I love. It's one of the things that I've always loved about makeup. It's what one of the things that draws me to makeup is I love trying new. I love trying formulations and I love trying new things and seeing how I feel about them. Um, so usually when I pan a product, I'm like, mm, I'm just going to try something else. But with this one, I'm like, I was out of this for like a couple weeks and I felt lost. I was like, I need my Kiwi Fuzz. I, I, and I repurchased it. I said I wasn't and then I did. So I'm probably... <laughs> I'm gonna just be honest and say I'm gonna repurchase this but yeah this has been a go-to it sits in my that's why I didn't have it at the desk here it was in my purse I had to go and get it 
because it sits in my purse and then when I go to work it sits in my little drawer and on my, you know on my desk and I take it out throughout. and I, I love this because I don't have to watch I don't have to look at what I'm doing it's just like and then my lips feel hydrated have a little color and this is what I'm wearing when I'm going for that like super light makeup vibe that I like to do during my work week is you know using my quickie you know urban decay quickie using my rosy blaze using my charlotte tilbury or my feet or my kindle um shade from phytosurgeons which i've been reaching for more so usually it's that and then having this on my lips and some mascara and a little bit of like these and i have some other single shadows that i've been trying out that's my vibe that's been the vibe the vibe has been very low-key and this has contributed to that because it's just it's beautiful and it's got pigment that's the thing this isn't just like if you have pigmented lips like I do you know how certain glosses can just look like clear on your on your lips because your own pigment is kind of beating it into submission this doesn't do that this gives me pigment and it's but it's not a lipstick it's sheer you know it's got a sheerness to it and you can sheer it out if you want to like and it the fade is really lovely so as you you know go about your day if you're drinking or eating the fade is really lovely and you still have like that feeling left behind of your lips feeling moisturized very nice very beautiful product um about face beauty has really been impressing me i have to say i was very mad about them when i first tried them but over the past like year year and a half they have really been impressing me all right, guys, so that is my best of 2023. Let me know in the comments down below. Is there a product in here that you expected me to have that I didn't have? Or did I have some surprises? And what have been some of your favorite products that you tried in 2023? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit the like button. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye now.